Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about a 12 volt versus a 24 volt solar system. There's pros and cons, but I think that a 24 volt system is superior and I'm going to walk you through the three different factors involved. Ready? Let's take a look. So these are my latest two systems. On the right, you can see I've got a 12 volt, 300 amp hour battery on a 1200 watt inverter. And on the left, I have a 24 volt, 200 amp hour system. So on the right, we've got 3800 kilowatt hours. And on the left, we've got 5120 kilowatt hours. So they're fairly similar in system capacity size. We've also got a 1200 watt inverter, but let's see what the advantages are. The primary advantage to a 24 volt system is that as voltage goes up, current goes down. I can use a four gauge wire instead of a two gauge wire and get the same amount of current being pulled through the system and not worry about it getting hot. So I get to save money on my wire size. This is both a cost saving measure and also just sort of a safety issue. If you watch my test video on my 12 volt 300 amp system, I noted that this wire was starting to get a little warm. It wasn't hot, but it was warm. The current will be half as much on a 24 volt system. So let's plug in an identical load and I'll show you how this works. I've got my little $20 space heater uh, aiming out into the garage because it's 100 degrees right now. Let's plug it in and see what the current draw is. So at 1,000 watts on my 12 volt system, I'm pulling 75 amps out of my 12 volt. It's a fair amount of current. And I'm pulling exactly half that on my 24 volt. So exact same load, exact same device, and I'm only pulling 36 amps. That's much, much, much more reasonable. There's another factor that people don't really talk about or think about all that much on a 24 volt system, and that's your solar charge controller. If you look behind me, I'm using a rich solar for both. One is a 20 amp and one is a 40 amp. However, if you look really closely at the technical specs, you can see that on a 24 volt system, you can put twice as many, twice as much wattage through the system than you can on a 12. So I get free capacity just by going to a 24 volt system. I'm using my 40 amp charge controller on my 12 volt system and my 20 amp charge controller on my 24 volt system, but I can put the same amount of panels on each of them. Since you, your charge controller is rated on amperage, not on voltage, by pushing the voltage up, I can get more total wattage through the system. So you can have more power sort of for free or buy a slightly large, a small, slightly smaller charge controller, which I wouldn't recommend. The price difference is, you know, 30 or $40, but I can get more power into the same size charge controller just by bumping the voltage up. I can get 1100 watts of solar through my 40 amp controller and on 24 volts instead of 550 watts on 12 volts. Okay, so you're probably thinking, what about 48 volt systems? Let's take this all the way. Really popular uh, videos on YouTube have an EG4 rack mount battery uh, with an inverter on top of it on a car, like what I'm showing. 48 volt systems have all of those same kind of advantages with one crucial disadvantage. It is true that you can pull more 
power out of a 48 volt system with a lower amperage so you can use a smaller wire size but there's one really crucial limitation and that is the solar input for a 12 or 24 volt system you only have to give it around 35 to 40 volts on solar that really means two solar panels two residential panels that are 35 volts put together should be enough on the rich solar their maximum solar input is a hundred volts that's the most you can put into it that's two maybe three panels and then you'll end up burning the charge controller out so 100 volts is the maximum 35 volts is the minimum so it's two to three panels on a 48 volt system the minimum amount of voltage that you have to give it is 120 volts that means in a perfect world with full sun that's four panels minimum in the real world it's going to mean six or maybe eight because you're never going to get full voltage out of them unless it's perfectly clear outside with no clouds so for a small emergency you know backyard system you're going to have to have a lot of panels just to kick the 40, 48 volt system on whereas on a 12 or 24 you can get away with fewer and smaller ones you might be thinking this is really complicated but it's not you're just wiring two batteries together here are my two 12 volt 200 amp hour batteries and they're just looped together right here so this becomes the, the negative this becomes the positive and this becomes one battery however lily pulls actually makes a 24 volt 200 amp hour battery in one piece if you check out the link below you can buy them separate or you can buy one massive battery that you treat like anything else it would be wired just like this you wouldn't have the loop in between because it's just one piece one of the other things people will ask about is well what about my 12 volt devices you know i've been doing this for a couple of years and i'm really struggling to think of a 12 volt only device that i really 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 want to have that i wouldn't just run off the inverter there are two exceptions that i can think of a 12 volt rv refrigerator or a cpap machine using a 12 volt converter they are going to run more efficiently going dc dc because you don't have the losses of the inverter it's not that big of a deal they make uh, 12 volt step downs that you can just wire on top of this and get 12 volts out of it this is what they look like this is a little one that i use for some solar stuff and you just take 24 volts in over here and you get 12 volts out over here so you could just bolt this to this wood beside wire in line with the inverter and get your 12 volt out so you can run your rv fridge or your cpap or whatever one of the other things to keep in mind with a 12 volt only system is making sure that you get a big enough bms on larger batteries 200 amps and greater it's not so much of a big deal anymore but you have to look really closely at cheap batteries for a 100 amp BMS versus a 200 amp BMS. If your 12 volt battery has a 100 amp BMS, the most power you can pull out of that thing is 1,000 watts because it's a factor of 10. You want to have a 200 amp BMS or greater if you want to more, pull more than 1,000 watts. Since I have two... 12 volt batteries both with 200 amp bms's on them that means i could pull over 4,000 watts out of this thing if i really wanted to i don't see any reason why i think a thousand to 1500 is more than enough but you could 1500 watts or so will kick on my chest freezer run my refrigerator and get over the startup surge of a window ac unit if i really wanted to do that Lily Poles has got a bunch of really great deals going on, so make sure you check out the links below. These things are always going on sale. So if you want to go 12 volts, they have a 300 amp monster. If you want to go 24 volts, they have a 24 200 amp system also. So check them out down below.
I hope that this was helpful for you. So uh, thanks, everyone, and we'll catch you on the next one. And if you enjoyed this, please uh, give me a thumbs up and a like and uh, put a comment down below. Thanks, everyone.